What's going on guys? This is Rob and we are back with the Sentry. Marvel Superman goes nuts. So here's the thing. This picks up basically with Ryan Topper and Mallory. Now for those of you guys who need to get caught up here, we're only one issue in, so the playlist is pretty short, just one video long. The long and short of this is that the Sentry Robert Reynolds has been dead for a while in Marvel Comics, but his powers had basically dispersed across the world. And what ended up happening here is like four or five people basically were dawned with his abilities. And in fact, people are still gaining his abilities. But Ryan Topper is actually traveling around and effectively killing everybody who had developed the powers of the century and then absorbing those powers into himself. So effectively, he's Siler from Heroes. Just not as cool. But Mallory is one of the people who had gained those abilities. Now, Mallory was wheelchair bound, but when her powers manifested, she of course gained the power of flight and so on, and then took off to the moon, to the blue area, where she's able to breathe in space. And pretty much anybody can breathe in space. For those of you guys who don't know, the blue area of the moon is, well, it's got a whole history with the Kree and the Celestials and all that kind of stuff. The long and short of it is that it is a portion of the moon that has oxygen, so people can breathe on it. And in fact, different characters in Marvel Comics have used the blue area as a base of of operations. The Watcher has done it, even though he doesn't need to breathe. The X-Men have used it as a base of operations. The Inhumans use it as a base of operations, which they should have stayed there, right? The best thing they did was just leave the planet, was just go away. That was like the best thing they ever could have done for anybody. But Ryan Topper, interestingly enough, doesn't kill Mallory. And in fact, he makes a comment in saying that she seems kind of cute. And so he ultimately ends up leaving. Now, at that point, we switch over to Times Square in New York City to what is obviously supposed to be Steven Yoon, the guy who was going to play the century in the Marvel Cinematic Universe in Thunderbolts, uh, who of course, as most of you guys know by now, dropped out of the project. So in the midst of all this, he's basically a street performer and he's actually there on a first date with a guy and they're all just kind of having a good time and he's performing his whole thing, right? And the whole kind of shtick. Then like a guy shows up out of nowhere and just like shoots him. Right, just like shoots this dude in the face. But like when that happens, he just like everybody else gets a momentary glimpse of the Sentry. In this instance, it is when the Sentry fought the Molecule Man during Dark Reign. So like, it's this cool thing because everybody thinks that he's dead. And in fact, Paul comes running over believing he's dead, but then he suddenly manifests the Sentry's abilities and comes back. The kicker to all this is everybody thinks that he's a mutant. And because of what's going on in the fall of X right now, mutants are public enemy number one. Everybody hates those guys. So they do exactly what you would think they would do in this situation where they immediately just start like screaming at this guy because all it takes is one dude. And that's one of the ironic things about the X-Men mythos is it just takes one guy because like everybody's clapping and everybody's like wow man this guy's alive crazy and he's got powers they think it's kind of a magic trick but then like paul chimes in and he's like you manipulative sociopath are you a freaking mutant right i mean i guess first date so I mean, he didn't really know the guy all that well but then he's like no 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 i'm not a mutant and that's when like the whole mob turns against him because that's the way it works in marvel comics right it's like all it takes is one person making an accusation and the whole world turns against you and so because of that he basically basically just flees for his life, gets out of there as fast as he possibly can. And then he ends up chasing down the guy who had basically gone to attack him. But then he's met by Ryan Topper. And the cool thing about this is Ryan is just like, nice resurrection trick back there. Let's see you try doing that again. And the guy's like, who in the world are you, right? And he's just like, my name's Ryan Topper, right? He's like, I'm doing the world a favor. And he kills him, right? He's like, I'm killing you right now because you were supposed to be in the Thunderbolts movie, but then you dropped out of the film. And now we have to kill you off in the comic because if we don't, we will have a version of the century in the comics that does not match the version in the movie. Continuity will be betrayed and potential fans will be confused. So he just kills him on the spot. Like that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, of course he doesn't say that, but that's why Marvel did it, <laughs> because literally Steven Yeun dropped out. So the thing about that is you end up jumping several blocks away to Times Square, right, to another place there. And there's this woman who's kind of glad because they're getting everything all sorted out right after the more recent symbiote attack and all that kind of stuff, which is cool because this does give us a kind of uh, position for this story within the Marvel continuity, meaning it takes place seemingly, of course, in the aftermath of the uh, of the King and Black storyline, which we already knew, but it's taking place around the same time as Marvel's gang war event, which started off strong and then became the most least interesting event ever in Marvel. And so what this does 
realizes while this girl's kind of there, she realizes there's these three chicks who are like shoplifting, right? And she's like, so like, what are you guys doing? And they're like, what do you think we're doing, right? We're stealing brazenly because everybody on TikTok's doing it and there's nothing you can do about it. So like, they just go take off, like they just, they go bolting. And this chick's like, not a chance. But in the middle of that, her powers kick in, right? And like, she gets this momentary glimpse of when Thor fought the century. So again, like it's just these cool little moments from the century's life and times. Now, of course, she ultimately chases these girls down and then helps them understand their place in their bigger picture. And so following that, you switch back over to Ryan himself once this girl leaves the store for the night and then Ryan like literally kills this girl on the spot and absorbs her power into himself. But switching back over to Mallory, Mallory's story has been a kind of internal crisis because she doesn't really know what her role is in all of this, right? Like it created an existential crisis in her life. She knew what her life was about. She had her life on lockdown. She had it all sorted and knew the direction that everything was going in. The problem with this is that with everything happening right now, you have the situation where she just doesn't know what to do, right? Like she was suddenly bestowed with these incredible powers. And now it's this question of like, what do I do with these abilities? Because the reality here, and this is something to kind of contend with, right? This is one of the coolest things about Marvel. Philosophically, there's vast differences between the average person and the superhero. And not even just looking at things like powers and how they handle their abilities and, you know, with great power must come great responsibility. But like, it's, it's kind of this example of like, imagine if you woke up tomorrow with like a billion dollars in your bank account right? And you could go anywhere you wanted to. You would travel the world and then you would probably buy a house and pay it off. And you would do all these things that you've always dreamed of doing. But then what? Like, then what comes next, right? There's no greater purpose there. And so when you have a person like Mallory, who's just suddenly bestowed with these incredible powers, these godly powers, right? Every, the entire life she had before is more or less over. But the fact is she can craft any kind of life for herself. And the things that she viewed as impediments, of course, being wheelchair bound, not really sure if I agree with that perspective, but she saw being handicapped as an impediment that that's all gone now, right? She can just do anything, right? But even then she kind of has this whole conversation where she says, it's really lonely up here, right? But the voices down there are warming my heart a little. I can literally hear everyone, even Clara, my roommate. Clara is not religious, but she's praying for me to come back. I wish I could tell you I am okay. I hope you found a new place to live, but I ruined the lives of everyone in my building. I can't forgive myself for demolishing their homes, even if it was an accident. And she says, I need to make things right. I can't be scared of my spasms anymore, right? Basically her powers kind of manifesting beyond her ability to control. And she's like, I know what I'm capable of. If that creep can figure this out, so can I. And so seizing control of her ability, she takes off to the Mediterranean Sea and then like rescues these migrants, right? Who are basically asylum seekers and are just kind of stuck dead in the water in their boat, right? Like literally just saving these folks. And what it does is it gives her a kind of boost of confidence that she's like, I actually did something good with these powers. And this is kind of the moment that like every potential superhero has. Spider-Man had it, Superman had it, Batman kind of has it a little bit whenever he beats people up for jaywalking or just anything that might be a crime in any capacity, right? Like different superheroes have it in different ways. And so it's a cool little thing to see that she is to a degree coming into her own. Of course, following that, she goes into like a self-righteous political spiel that nobody cares anything about. So what you do is you switch over to Misty Knight and to Jessica Jones. They're the ones that are hot on the trail of this whole thing, trying to figure out what's going on, right? Like these different people who are manifesting the century's powers. Of course, they pick up on Steven Yoon, who's basically dead now. And of course, like this other girl who's basically dead as well. They don't know it. And so it's kind of like, what's the bigger picture here, right? Like what's the bigger game that's taking place? And so what they end up doing is actually hitting in on Ryan Topper, right? They ask like, what about the Ohio kid, right? The DoorDash cyclist, the click clocker with CP. And the response is from Ryan's chat on a dating app, he took a train to meet someone in Queens. Farad made transactions on a bike repair and to load his Metro card a month ago. Most likely use the subway to make his deliveries. And all of Mallory's click clock followers, which is obviously an allegory to TikTok, right? You couldn't think of a better name, Marvel? Come on, man. But anyway, like a frequent shopper at Sweet Leaf Stationers, right, in Penn Station. And so basically they end up learning this guy it's following or has come across every single person 
who has developed the powers of the century. And then within a short amount of time of them encountering each other, that they all basically end up dying. So obviously Ryan Topper is the guy they're looking for. Good job, Misty Knight and Jessica Jones. You managed to put a three piece puzzle together. Congratulations. But the cool thing here is you basically switch up, right? Like outside of Dallas, Texas, where like the Avengers have gathered together to fight the UFOs, which is kind of dope because I haven't seen or heard from the UFOs in a long time. And I kind of wish they would come back. To be honest, man, these guys were minor league at best. They were on the level of like factor three from the old Stan Lee, Jack Kirby X-Men stories. If anybody remembers that team from way back in the day, God, I'm showing my age, man. But the fact is here, <laughs> Ryan shows up out of nowhere, donning the full gear of the century and basically says like Avengers, mind if I cut in, my name is Ryan Century because I can't come up with a cool name and I'm here to help. So the question has to be asked, what happens when basically Marvel Superman, who's a sociopathic serial killer, ends up fighting the Avengers? That's the real question here. But with that being said, guys, we're gonna bring this to an end. If you guys need to get caught up, make sure you guys click this link to the playlist and I will catch you all later.